everyone, it's Danny. Welcome back to another layout for the Cocoa Vanilla Studio design team. Today I'm going to be working with the brand new These Days collection. I have been so inspired to create with this collection. As soon as I got my hands on it, I just had so many ideas. And one of them is to make a loaded mason jar layout. So one of the cards that comes with the three by four pocket cards is this one. It's this beautiful little mason jar full of little houses and trees. And as soon as I saw that, I just thought it was gorgeous and I had to make my own version. <laughs> so basically what I've done is I went on Etsy and I did a search for mason jar cut files and I found one that would suit and then I uh, modified it slightly in um, Silhouette Studio just to make it exactly what I was looking for. Now I have cut the jar lid out of a dark grey cardstock and then I backed it with a silver glitter just to bring in a little bit of metallic. Then I cut the outside of the jar, uh, the body of the jar in just white and I did uh, yeah just a thin white border of that to make a uh, like the outside of the jar and then I have cut the inside of the jar on one of the 12 by 12 pattern papers in that um, I think it's a blue or a sage green um, I can't quite remember actually <laughs> this collection is all super new to me so I'm still getting used to what everything is but I've just cut that out um, to fill out the back base of the jar basically the back ground of the jar and then I went through with my foam squares and I just cut them well foam rectangles really I cut them into strips and went all the way around the uh, outside of the the jar so that will pop that up and be dimensional um, I'm using a couple of the border strips off the cut apart sheet here just to make a kind of base for my jar on the pocket card there are kind of two strips of um, patterned not patterned paper but two pattern strips at the bottom um, kind of as a base so I am echoing that I'm just using slightly different colors uh, I'm just taking advantage of those border strips because I don't tend to use them very often as border strips but they're perfect for this I'm just cutting those to size and then I am going to use this pocket card on the layout as well. Um, just, yeah, I think it's really cute. You've got your little little jar and then the big jar. So I'm just cutting that out of the background paper. And then I'm going to go through all the die cuts and pull out everything that is also in that little jar. So all the trees and all the houses. Um, and I am also going to pop a couple of little photos in the jar as well uh, to fill it out. So so excited about this layout I love how it turns out in the end um, I am I did pull out those butterflies as well I don't end up using them uh, but I do use that cute little street sign and I also use that picture perfect moments uh, on the ribbon as a title so I'm just going through now with all the uh, die cuts that I chose and trying to get a rough idea of where I'm going to lay them out. Um, in a minute, I do realize that I should probably bring in my photos first because, yep, there we go. <laughs> so those are my two photos, my sweet little baby. Um, yeah, I was just having trouble kind of picturing where everything would go. So I thought I'd better bring in those photos. I am going to distress those paper strips. I'm just using my fingernails. Um, and it's kind of scratching along the edge and then I will just kind of roll them down from the top there give them a nice lovely texture and then tuck in, in those photos and I'll just kind of arrange my ephemera around my photos so I put that one at the bottom because she is looking sort of up and to the top left of the photo so I want her looking in that direction across the page and yeah, so I'm just going through now and finessing all my um, placement. So once I've got a pretty good idea of where I want all that to be, I'm going to adhere my photos down so that I can uh, more easily embellish without them moving around the place. So I'm just using some ATG tape to stick those down. And then I will start to come in with my tacky glue and adhere down my ephemera pieces starting with those bigger pieces so those houses and those trees I'm going to skip two in a minute don't worry <laughs> I don't make you watch the whole thing uh, of the gluing process um, but yeah just getting everything sorted and situated rather and I'm just using a spot of tacky glue at the base of all my ephemera and then kind of lifting up the top edges like I usually do to pre create lots of um, dimension I am just going to pop that street sign there 
And now I'm coming in with some fussy cut houses. So these were fussy cut off the, I think it's called Neighbourhood, the 12 by 12 paper with all the houses on it. Uh, I went through and fussy cut a bunch of those and I'm just going to use those to kind of fill in uh, a lot of these empty spaces. So they're a little bit smaller than the die cut, so they give a nice variation there. Now I'm placing this little butterfly strategically to cover up the bottom of that <laughs> street sign post. It just looked a little bit like it was floating there. These tiny butterflies are fussy cut from the A5 paper stack from the butterfly pattern paper. So I of course, of course I've fussy, fussy cut a bunch of these out because I love them so much. So I think I put four of them along the inside of the jar and then I will go through once I pop my jar down on the background paper I'll add some more as well. So I'm just going to trim off all the overhanging bits now that I have my jar uh, pretty much filled. Pretty sure this is where I stop with the embellishing. Yep, and now I'm thinking about a background paper. So I did think about white, but it's just a, it's too much of a blank, empty background for me. <laughs> I just really struggle with white backgrounds. Um, I pulled out the wood grain, not thinking I would use it, but I actually really love how the jar pops against the wood grain. And uh, mason jars are kind of like rustic and country feeling, uh, I guess. So the the wood the wood grain really complements that nicely. So I've got a good idea of where I'm going to place all my elements. So I'm just going to go through and do a few splatters on the background before I adhere anything down. I'm just using my white Liquitex acrylic ink and I'm doing some fine splatters with this little paintbrush. And then I'm using a bigger paintbrush and coming in and doing some bigger splatters. And I'm just going all the way around the outside of where the mason jar is going to sit. And then there I have stuck that down. I did add some ATG tape to the back of that just off camera. And now I'm going to go through and peel all the backing off all those little foam strips. Um, I just did the bottom of the jar and then I'm going to line that up carefully. Then I'll peel off all the sides and then line that up carefully. So I'm not going to try and stick the whole thing down at once, just um, very difficult, <laughs> way too difficult and uh, too big a chance that I would um, mislay it. So just working in one section at a time. Lots of little paper strips <laughs> on my desk by the time I was finished this. So there we go. And then I'm just going to stick down my lid. I'm using a combination of ATG tape and uh, tacky glue. So I'll just add a little bit of tacky glue along that strip there where my little overlap there we go. And then I am just bringing in the few extra bits and pieces I'm going to use. So that jar obviously takes up most of the page, but I did want to tuck in this little jar as well. And this is why I've placed the large mason jar to the left slightly because I wanted to add these elements on the right. So I'm just going to pop up that title piece to the same height as the outline of my mason jar. Just on those same foam squares and then lay it just there glue down my little jar and now I'm going to come in with those extra butterflies. So I'm going to make three clusters of these around the outside of the jar. I'm going to use a little one and then I've also fussy cut the a bunch of the big ones off the 12 by 12 pattern paper. So I'm just going to stick those, um, yeah, just little, little clusters of butterflies like that. Some of them are overlapping the jar. Now usually I would add foam to the back of my butterflies but I'm not going to bother here because there is already foam uh, there that will help stop the page getting squashed so bending up the wings is enough in this case. Trim off the branding strip and then the last thing I will do is just add some Nouveau drops in white um, in random places. And that's my layout finished. I love this one. I love this new collection. It's so gorgeous. Definitely go check out the blog post and visit the Facebook group if you are not already a member. The link is in the description box below. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.